Austin warns of catastrophe as Texas again becomes center of pandemic. Mm -hmm. Austin should be warning of catastrophe regardless of the pandemic, by the way. The situation is critical. Desmar walks Austin Travis County's health authority said in a statement, our hospitals are severely stressed and there's little we can do to alleviate their burden with surging cases. Austin only has six available ICU beds. Um, and they've only got 313 available ventilators and most of those ventilators being used to smoke brisket. As you can tell, major issues here. But here's the thing I will say about Austin. Did you read this? Because I was, there is a massive influx of um, the Hollywood people coming here. Mm. And read the Hollywood Reporter. Because I was quoted in this article. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was quoted in this. There's a massive influx of people here. I was shocked. I almost had to eat my words. Because you know me. I tend to believe that if they're going to write an article like this, it's going to be has-beens or people who aren't relevant mm -hmm. or people that nobody cares about, okay? No, no, go back to the top. But in, in, in all fairness to The Hollywood Reporter, they have, lo this is true, they have located some A-list stars. <laughs> the types of people where if you bumped into them, have you ever felt stunned in the presence of another human being? Because these people that have decided to leave Los Angeles for Austin are top level talent, top tier celebrities. These are not people where you do like a double take. This is like they need security, famous, worldwide, Michael Jackson types, Princess Diana. Ready? Let's do it. As stars like Stephen Amell and Zachary Levi flock to the Texas Capitol. Dude. I mean. This is did you even know they were here? I didn't know. Get get them up, please. Because I they, I'm not trying to make a joke. I'm not kidding about this. They're here in Austin. Hold on. <laughs> Stephen Amell is a Canadian actor, producer, and occasional professional, professional wrestler. Known for playing Oliver Queen, Green Arrow, on the CW series Arrow, the show that started the Arrowverse. I had thought that the Hollywood Reporter would write an article about, like, C-list people... <laughs> But I was wrong. So we have the uh, uh, this guy. He's an actor and a part-time professional wrestler. Zachary Levy Pugh is an American actor, comedian, and singer. He received critical acclaim for starring as Chuck Bartowski in the series Chuck and as the title character in Shazam. This is... Here's the question. Yeah. Will... Hollywood survive. <laughs> it's not funny because there's a lot of good people in California. We all hate the business, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people in there that have families. And with this type of exodus, <laughs> with the power players in Hollywood deciding to leave, to come to Austin, Texas, keep going down because it doesn't end there, Ben. It doesn't stop there. <laughs> Okay. Now, this guy, Jason uh, Padalecki. Oh, is, Jared Padalecki? Jared Padalecki is like the big Austin advocate. He's uh, Padalecki's been here since 2010. Mm. And uh, he's done some stuff. Go down because he he is on some big shows. Uh, I don't know. They don't. He is on stuff. But <laughs> I James, <guess> James <laughs> Vanderbeek is here <laughs> from Dawson's Creek. <laughs> James Vanderbeek has said, hey, fuck you, Hollywood. Hey, fuck you. Do you know what he, do you know how he, do you know how James Vanderbeek left Hollywood? How? He walked into Paramount Studios in Hollywood because they offered him a seven picture deal mm -hmm. because someone there just saw Dawson's Creek. Mind blowing. 
Someone just saw it and said, where's that guy now? <laughs> they bring him into Paramount. They said, seven picture deal, yeah. but you have to live in California. <laughs> he said, hey, fuck you. He goes, have you ever heard of the Texas Hill Country? And he just walked out, dude. Yeah. $20 million upfront guarantee, seven picture deal. He said, no, James Vanderpeek. Listen to Scott Eastwood, Adrian Palicki, Adrian <laughs> Grenier from Entourage, the hit new show, and James Vanderbeek from Dawson's Creek, the hit new show. Listen to this. At the park in Beverly Hills near the house we just moved away from, you're not allowed to fly a kite. Th then the beak groused on Instagram as he moved the beak. That's what they call James Vanderbeek. The beak? The beak groused on Instagram as he moved his family to Texas this November. Quote, also not allowed at any park in Beverly Hills, riding a bicycle, climbing a tree, learning anything from an instructor, using weights, when people at... Now, by the way... What? I don't think this is true. It's not true. This isn't... A lot of it's not true. But... I love that he's like climbing a tree. You, hey, get off the tree, scumbag. Hey, scumbag. I hope James Vanderbeek's children get paralyzed from falling out of a tree where they are literally, like, literally, I hope he has to like wheel his son in a wheelchair, like, into Austin, and his son's like this. <laughs> and James Vanderbeek, and they they go up to him. They go, dude, I read that. I hope it happens soon, dude. I read that fucking article about why you moved to Austin. It's so true. It's so true, dude. Like you can't climb a tree. And the kid just like, eh. and they go, what happened to him? And I hope James Vanderbeek has to go. Well, I was encouraging him to climb a tree to be a real man, and he fell, and I. I didn't catch him because I was Googling myself and then he broke his neck and now he can't walk. Um, but the good news is, here's the good news. The good news is that he can fly a kite now in the park. Now, not him, but we tie it to his wheelchair and then push him around. <laughs> James Vanderbeek, you can't learn anything from an instructor using weights. These are just some of the reasons. More freedom! was also a motive often expressed by arguably the most influential newcomer, Jui Regin. Who is this? Who is this guy? Joe Regan. Joe Regan. American comedian, podcaster, and UFC color commentator. He's a former actor, a television presenter. Rogan began his career in comedy. Regan. Joe Regan. Interesting. He lives here now. We're kidding, of course. Joe moved here to open up a comedy club. It is open. The Let me tell you right now. How much fun did we have the other night at Joe Rogan's New Comedy Club? Here it is. Joe Rogan's New Comedy Club, September 1st, opening night. Here is the lineup, everybody. Patrice O'Neill, Gary Shandling, Greg Giraldo, Robert Schimmel, Joan Rivers, Robin Williams, and me and Tony Hinchcliffe. September 1st, opening night. Joe Rogan and Friends. Big show on September 1st. Very, very excited about this. Are you excited about I'm this? Stoked. Are you bringing your wife? Yeah, she wants Do to come. Do you think James Vanderbeek will be there? Boy, I hope so. Do you think actor and part-time professional wrestler, whatever that other scumbag's name was, will be there? Oh, Z Bo Zach Levi? Yeah, Zach Levi. By the way, uh, can we play Padlick Padlecki uh, tort showed us his house uh, that um, Ida, our friend Ida... Al and Peg, Peg, uh, showed me this guy's house. It's grotesque. It's on YouTube, uh, the way it's designed. Can we look at it? Yeah, look because at it. it's the perfect, like, Austin uh, aesthetic, which is just, it's like an old couch where they just throw blankets on it. And I guess people use those blankets to cry about that they can't live anywhere else. Oh, is this at Men's Health, this one right here? Or are you talking about the farmhouse? The farmhouse. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is a dump. Can we play this? Absolutely. 
Hey, D. I'm Genevieve Padalecki. Hi, I'm we're Jared really, Padalecki. really famous. <laughs> now, I know you're shocked to see us. We're incredibly... No, he's done stuff. Bring up what he's done. Okay. I don't want people attacking me. I got to live here with these people for a few months. I'm not shitting on these people. All I'm saying is we have to deal in the world as it is, right? So he is legit. Oh, he, Supernatural. He was yeah. on in the show Supernatural and mm. Gilmore Girls. He's one of the greatest actors that's ever lived. He was in the film House of Wax. Have you seen House of Wax? I've not seen well, House of Wax. you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> okay? House of Wax is a great Daniel Day Lewis, Jack Nicholson, him. <laughs> Let's go to the house. By the way, what if you're noticing, we're burning it here in a way that like pretty soon our physical safety will be that we have to leave. Do you understand? Like I actually, I, know. I woke up in the middle of the night last night and I was wondering if it's safe to be here anymore. You know? No, truly. Like I walked outside and I went, is it safe to be here anymore? But that is the future of the show, I believe. We'll, we'll have to just get deeper and deeper and deeper into a sort of canyon a bunker of some kind. Some type of bunker. We got to talk to Dick Cheney about how he did it. <laughs> but I look at look at this woman with the hat. You know I love these. I'm kidding. I love you guys. Let's see more of their farmhouse. I hope it's modern chic. Welcome to our humble abode here in Austin, Is Texas. it humble? I bet it's not humble. That's the joke. See, it's not humble. It's actually very nice. Ooh. That's right. Lots of trees for climbing. This is the main room of our house. This is where Is that where the slaves the got whipped? And watch movies and eat sometimes and it's too late. Can to you have smell the stench of I mean, really slave the as their the skin come flying off their back? We like to bring in the vegetables. Is that where you put the vegetables the where the slave got whipped? This area and Take that really hat off, crocodile Dundee. Take Everyone's the hat off. And what is with women in place. Austin and these fucking hats? I don't know. What the fuck is going on here? They all act like they're on safari and they want to be because they want to go to Africa and buy slaves to bring them back to their modern chic farmhouse. Neo farmhouse, modern chic. It's modern chic. By the way, listen to what this dumb dumb says. Okay. She, I got to get on a plane out of here soon because, I mean, they're going to come for me. We're right? going to see them somewhere for sure. I don't think, well, I don't know if we'll see. We don't go anywhere. Like they, true, yeah. they invited us to join the Soho house in Austin. I'm like, this is a trap. I mean, it's a literal trap. I, You know what I mean? We know one guy here from Clubhouse. He's, you know, I mean, he's a sweet man, mm -hmm. but I mean, he's brain dead, right? He's, he's he, doesn't, he doesn't have enough oxygen to his brain, which is okay. I don't know. It's long COVID or... Short COVID. I don't know what it is. And he's a sweet man. And I like him, but there's something yeah, like in his too. brain that doesn't function, right? I mean, that's my take. So we have Crocodile Dundee here with the hat. And she's talking to her husband about why the, uh, the kitchen. Because the kitchen is the soul. It's the soul. And by the way, now that I have to fix up this dumb fucking house, this is all I do. Like, all I spend my time doing mm -hmm. is have these, like, horrible conversations with, like, horrible people because all the people that work all the people for first of all that work in like the business of like design for the the most part like the vast majority of them they're just it's not they're not like passionate about it right so they're just kind of like kind of like glazed like the best case is they're glazed over and they're like hey ha ha you know it's nice when the tiles are cold on your feet they're cold on your feet but you know, that's best case. Worst case is they're kind of they're kind of just they're like looking off and you have to go, hello. And they're like, what? And you go, I want a refrigerator, you know? And they're like, 16 years ago, I killed my son by accident. I backed out of my driveway and he was on his bicycle. I killed him. The marriage didn't survive too long after that. After that, I ended up getting into some gambling debts and moving down south. I'm like, wolf appliances are good. No? Wolf? Wolf, we want gas. Let's play the rest of these uh, Looney Tunes. Right. Grab your food, go sit at the table. At nothing the table. is precious in nothing this house. Nothing is precious. It's very livable. By the way, and nothing is precious in this house. Let's get me and Ray Kump in there. 
<laughs> I want to bring Ray Kump through that house with a with a big with a big fucking like what are the biggest things at 7-Eleven they have? Oh, big gulps. I want to bring Ray Kump in there with a big gulp and just ashing everywhere. <laughs> and then when she gets angry, I go, wait a minute, you said nothing. Was now, by the way, look at this dump. By the way, look at this dump. They got a cowhide rug. I mean, like, could there be any place that attracts less of a caliber of people than these people? It's like sitcom stars who who mm -hmm. were on superhero shows in like 2006. That's what they mean by Hollywood. They mean people that were on television 18 years ago in a in a in a green suit running around pretending to save people. Continue. I just casual is the biggest thing and we really want everyone who steps into this house to feel like it's their home and they're welcome. Yeah. So we kind of um, laugh when people say like, "Hey, should I take my shoes off?" Like, no. Like, well, there are three dogs inside and, and three seven wild. kids and yeah. chickens and whatever. So right. make yourselves at home. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're not precious about this. We, okay. we, we love it. It's our home, but our home is your home. Okay. I also is really it? love it because not only is it pretty, for take me, the hat but off. We use everything. So our kids do like to come up here. They grab their pots and pans. How do they grab, grab the pots and pans, liar? Coop, and then we come over. How do they grab the, the pots and pans? That's not true. Dinner together and how do they grab the pots and pans? Yeah. It's and fucking impossible. We'll They're in children. And I'm just gonna get get this going. I think the elf on the shelf likes our uh, <laughs> bull. Likes our bull. He needs a name. Harold. Harold. Harold is his name. Winnie Cummings texts me. She goes, "What we happens? In, what happened in really San Diego? Big remodel. Should I just <laughs> should I respond? You overdosed." <laughs> I'm just gonna say I have to prepare the eulogy for your funeral. <laughs> I have to prepare your eulogy. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that is. Isn't it funny? It's very funny. Continue with this. I'm look at look at these two. They're Come my on our best house, friends. Which, if you want to test your marriage, do a remodel. Right. That was a tough. That oh was my tough god. First, but we. That's we what got, I've always heard. If you want to test your marriage, do a remodel or have a kid with brain cancer. Those are the two, remodeling your home or having a kid with brain cancer and you can't afford to pay the bills. Those are actually the real tests of your marriage. Um, choosing a cabinets and also a child with a brain tumor where the bills are stacking up and you can't pay them. And um, that's a huge test of your marriage. But it may not be as big of a test of your marriage as walking around furniture stores in that hat. But don't you see what I mean, folks, about why it's bad here? Yeah, skip down the line, and then we'll get out of this. I kind of want to see their backyard. Let's like see a... their backyard. Their backyard's kind of nice, huh? Oh, is it? It's pretty. Okay, start here. It's pretty and green. Everyone's obsessed with green here. It's green. Isn't it green? We really wanted to create a, an area and an outdoor area yes. where we could eat some of the plants and Ooh. also play some sports and everything was like really usable. So not only are most of the plants usable and edible, but our yard, everything is for jumping and yes. soccer and yes. football. Right. and a little outdoor seating again. Yes. Our yard has a few levels. And so it's nice because you get like this view of where the kids would go, but we'll sit here, we'll cook, we'll grill. And then you'll see these are hey, our kitchen windows. It's a beautiful yard, so but let's kill it for a minute. It's a beautiful yard, but let me tell you something. You're not famous, right? Mm -hmm. I got, and that's okay. By the way, it's nicer to have a family than to be famous. But st can we, can the Hollywood reporter stop writing articles that like a rash of famous people have decided to live here? No one would know who the fuck these people are if they walked into fucking IHOP. Cut it out. <laughs> truly, truly cut it the fuck out. They're not famous. They did the better thing, which is raising a family in the greenery. I'm for that. I'm pro-family. But let's not pretend that they're, like, fucking famous. Like paparazzi or fucking diving over the gate in fucking the hill country to get a glimpse of these retards eating Chick-fil-A. It's not true. They're not famous. There's nothing wrong with not being famous. But let's be damn fucking sure about it. They're not fucking famous, okay? How many fucking views does this thing even have? It's probably more than my fucking shit show. 850,000, but, yeah, but you know, Architectural it, Digest has 5 million subs, so. Here's the deal. It's not a ton of views relative to a house tour of somebody who is really, really famous, mm -hmm. okay? Robert Downey Jr.'s home has 25 million views. Yeah, Do you yeah, see yeah. that? Mm -hmm. You know the difference? 
He's famous, yeah. and they're not. Hillary Duff, seven point six million. Hillary Duff is uh, famous, and she's in Pizzagate. People wanted that tour. You know that tour. They wanted to see where the chamber was. Remember when they tried to rope Hillary Duff into Pizzagate? Because she did. She did something stupid. Like she uploaded like a photo of a child, and it was like did taped she? or something. I don't know what she. Maybe she is killing cat. I don't know. But she did something stupid, and everybody got into it. <laughs> I never read this. Hillary Duff shuts down, quote, disgusting child trafficking Twitter conspiracy. By the way, I'm sorry if you didn't laugh all the way through 2020, something is wrong with you. On Saturday morning, the singer and actress became a trending topic on the site when a number of users made unfounded accusations of child trafficking against her. Based on an Instagram story she posted containing photos of her son, in once of the since deleted pictures, her son can be seen lying down nude with lotion on his body. Duff decided to respond via tweet, stating that the accusations were not only untrue, but they were invasive and offensive as well. Everyone bored as fuck right now, I know, but this is actually disgusting. Quote, whoever dreamed this one up and put this garbage into the universe should take a break from their damn phone, maybe get a hobby. Hillary Dizzle. I don't know what she did. I'm sure she's not trafficking children, but, you know, she'll be in Austin too in a few years. But this is what I mean. 850,000 views is not a lot of views. No, comparative. Compared to the people that are famous. Mm -hmm. Okay? And by the way, I'm not telling them to be famous. They have a much better life being who they are. Mm -hmm. But let's stop this. Jessica Alba uh, is showing us a home in Los Angeles. She's got 31 million views yeah. here. And these people have less because they are less. Uh, and they live in Austin, Texas. And that's okay. <laughs> Coronavirus, baby. We are the world. We are the Delta. 